Hi folks, welcome to this video on preparing the multi-step income statement uh, which has discontinued operations and including as part of your income statement the EPS disclosures uh, and also we're going to uh, review preparing the in uh, statement of changes in equity as well as the equity section of the balance sheet. So let's begin with the data we have for ABC Company at the end of 2009. You'll notice here that in the trial balance, we have some accounts here highlighted in yellow. Those indicate the items that should be on your uh, income statement when you prepare it. You'll notice here as well that we have uh, both elements that could comprise a discontinued operation, uh, profit or loss. We have a loss on operating the discontinued operation while it's up for sale, and you'll see we also have a gain on the sale of the discontinued operation so when we sold it we actually made a profit or we had a gain. You'll notice here as well we have a line for income tax expense where I ask you to see note one below and you'll notice that in note one we tell you which tax rate to use based on the first letter of your last name. Now for myself, just for uh, demonstration purposes throughout the video, I'll be using a rate that none of you would be using, which is a 19% tax rate. I've chosen to use that to do the video so that I'm not doing anything identical to what another student might get. Um, so again, don't use the 19% rate. Uh, you use your own rate based on the first letter of your last name. You'll notice as well that we've given you some information on the equity ba section balances. We've told you that common shares had an unlimited authorization, which again you will need when you do the equity section of the balance sheet. You also know that uh, common shares outstanding um, at January 1st, 09, which is the beginning of the current year for which we're doing the statements, we had 73,500 shares outstanding for common. And you'll notice that on April the 1st, we issued an additional 20,000 shares. So that 20,000 shares now gives us by the end of 2009, 93,500 common shares, which we've got here in the trial balance. And you'll also notice here that we issued them for $2 a share or $40,000 in total. And we again will use this to help us do our statement of changes in equity because that's new equity that was created. We also know that the opening balance for 2009 for our uh, total shareholders equity was 321000 and we can, again can use this when we do our statement of changes in equity and we also know that we have uh, preferred shares issued an outstanding uh, 10,000 of them but our authorization uh, was limited to 100,000 shares. Um, the, we do have some preferred share dividends in arrears for 2008. So your requirements here are to prepare the income statement complete with a three-line title. We want you to make sure that you organize it correctly with continuing discontinued operations and your um, uh, profit or net income or loss at the bottom, uh, depending on what you get. Um, and uh, we also want to make sure that you do proper subtotaling throughout your preparation of the uh, income statement. Also show your discontinued operations net of tax and make sure that you show all earnings per share disclosures. And again, along with the disclosures, make sure that you show your calculations. We also want you to prepare and include your uh, WAX calculation and all your EPS calculations. So don't just plunk down a number for EPS on the income statement. Make sure you show us your calculations. And we also want you to prepare a statement of changes in equity in the equity section of the balance sheet in good form. Some credit will also be given to preparing a professional looking report uh, properly formatted, uh, which is free of spelling errors. So now let's begin. So welcome back folks to the income statement preparation. You can see that in order to do this we've got the name of the company, so the who, the what, and the when. Notice it's for a period and we have the year ending December 31st. Now um, you'll notice here that what we have is uh, those accounts that we indicated earlier in the question. All we've done here is line them up in accordance with where they need to be. So we've taken the ones from the question that we highlighted in yellow 
because those are the ones that are income statement items. And we've gone to uh, prepare the statement in a format that should be familiar to you. Sales less your cost of goods sold gives you your gross profit. And notice from this gross profit, you deduct operating expenses. The operating expenses you have in this question are of two types, selling expense and depreciation expense on equipment. So these two amounts will get deducted from your gross profit in order to leave you with income from operations, and again that's pre-tax, of uh, $225,000. You remember from your prerequisite course that you would also deduct other expenses or add other revenues. In this case, we only have another expense, which is interest expense, and that's $5,000. So that gives us income from continuing operations before we calculate tax of $220,000. Now, from this um, amount of 220000 this is where we need to start calculating our income tax expense. Because you remember, we're going to have three amounts for income tax expense in this particular question. We're going to have tax expense on our income from continuing operations. We're going to have income tax expense on the gain that we booked on the sale of a discontinued operation. And we're also going to have, in our case, a tax benefit because we had a loss on uh, operating our discontinued operation. So let's focus one at a time. You see I've deducted income tax expense here. Now I hope you can see this. This 41,800 is basically 220,000, but that's multiplied by my 19% tax rate. So you remember here that I told you I was using a 19% tax rate. Your income tax expense uh, from continuing operations income will be different because you're using a different tax rate than I am. Now you'll notice that when I deduct that tax expense from my income from continuing operations before or pre-tax, I'm going to get income from continuing operations after tax of 178200 now I want to focus on my discontinued operations items of which there are two. The loss on operating the discontinued operation. Now don't forget we mentioned earlier in class that when we have a loss we book less income tax on it, right? So in other words we'd get a tax refund or a tax benefit. There would be um, um, a relaxation of tax in other words. We wouldn't have to pay tax on a loss. We'd have to pay tax or book tax expense on a gain, which we'll show you in a minute, but when we have a loss, we have a tax benefit. So we have what I would call a lesser loss. So instead of a loss of 66,000, we're going to deduct a tax benefit from that, so we will only have a loss of 53,460. Now you'll notice that in this case, I put the brackets there. You don't need to do that. The only reason I put the brackets there is to remind you as a student that this is a loss and you're gonna be netting out a gain against it. That's just to show you that this is in fact a loss and this is a net gain. So in other words, I don't want students adding it together, adding these two amounts together with a bracket and getting uh, a wrong number. So just for demonstrative purposes and uh, for the video uh, to demonstrate, I just put brackets just to indicate it's a loss. Now I have my gain. I have a gain of um, seven thousand uh, or thirty-seven thousand dollars, and my income tax expense is $7,030. So again, how would I get that? Well, it's 37000 in my case, but I would be multiplying that uh, gain from the sale of the discontinued segment by 19% in order to get my tax expense that I would have to book on that gain of $7,030. Similarly here, I'll just show you this. This one would come from what? A $66,000 loss, and I'll just put loss in here, times my 19% tax rate. And that's going to give me this amount of tax from which I'll deduct um, from the loss to give me a lesser loss of 53460 So now you can see I have my loss, net of, uh, uh, my loss, net of tax, and I have my um, gain net of tax. So remember when you're doing your statements, Remember to make sure that you show your loss on discontinued operations, net of tax, and your gain net of tax, as I've done here. Some students might prefer to put your net of tax amount here, 
net of tax benefit, just as we did in class, and that's fine, but I just want to make sure that you show me the tax calculation. So that's why I, I put it here so that I could better show you here in the side how I got that amount. So you can do that. It's up to you. And in this case, you'd need to state it 12,540. And here I would also need to show it net of tax. In this case, it's an expense because I have a gain and that would be $7,030. And again, the only reason why I didn't put these in here is because I thought it might be easier to show you in the comment box here how I got these numbers if I put them on a separate line. But to do it this way in a separate line is not a problem either. You can do that. But notice that when I add up my discontinued operations item, my loss is bigger than my gain. So at net, I have a loss from my discontinued operations, and this is on an after-tax basis, just as my income from continuing operations here is after-tax, and I have a loss of 23490 So if I add this loss to this income, I'm going to get net income, or what you guys have been seeing it throughout the textbook as profit, of 154710 now you'll notice here that I bolded three items. I bolded the 178,200, which is my income from continuing operations after tax. I bolded my loss on the discontinued operations, which is 23,490 after tax, and my profit or net income, which is always after tax because that's why it's net income, 154,710. I bolded them because I have to calculate an earnings per share value on each of those three items. Remember that when you have a discontinued operation, you have three EPS calculations. If you did not have a discontinued operation, so if we didn't have any of that stuff here, we didn't have any of this, we would have only income from continuing operations, which would be the same as net income, and then we'd only need one EPS calculation. So now, before I calculate my earnings per share, what I need to do is I need to make sure that I, am um, just going to bring this back down to size if I can. Um, let me see. So it all fits on the screen here a little bit better. So now what I have is I have my um, weighted average common share calculation. And I know it's a little bit small here, but if you can have a look down here, what we've got is uh, we've got WAX or weighted average common share calculation. And we're going to do this because we need to make sure that we calculate our denominator for the earnings per share calculation. So you remember in the question, it said that we did have, um, if you go back here, 73,500 shares outstanding at the beginning of the year, January 2009. All we've done here now is we've said, well, if that's what we had outstanding at the beginning, don't forget we issued an additional 20,000 shares on April the 1st. So those 73,500 shares were outstanding only for January, February, and March, but an additional 20,000 on top of the 73,500, which is 93,500, were outstanding for nine months of 12. So therefore, we now have um, uh, for April all the way to December, for nine months of 12, 93,500. So doing that weighted average is going to give us 88,500 common shares. So now, if we calculate our earnings per share, we're going to have our income from continuing operations, which is 178.2, minus our preferred share dividend. Now you'll remember, if you go back to the question, they did tell us that we had preferred shares, 10,000 issued. Because the shares were cumulative, if we go back to the question, we can see that the preferred shares were cumulative. They didn't pay a dividend or they didn't declare a dividend in 2008. So now we have to consider how does that, that, that dividend in arrears impact, if at all, our calculation of the EPS numerator. So now if we go back to our question here, we can see that we've deducted only the current year's entitlement. This is not the arrearage. 
So in other words, this is only in this case, I'll just put a comment in here, only the current year entitlement. All right. So remember, when you have a cumulative preferred share, even if you have arrearages, we only deduct a current year's entitlement. All right. So in our case, we would only be deducting our $2 a share, which is the dividend times 10000 that's for the current year entitlement. And that would give us 178,200 less 20,000 divided by our wax would give us $1.79 per share. Now, what we would need to do in addition to that is we'd also need to calculate, because we had said earlier that we need three earnings per share calculations, we'd need to calculate an EPS on the discontinued operations loss. And again, notice here that we do not deduct the preferred share dividend because dividends are never declared and paid out of a discontinued operation because that discontinued operation is going, right? So we don't deduct the dividend here, but we do divide by 88,500 wax and we're going to get a loss per share of 27 cents. So now to calculate our EPS on net income or profit, we can merely add these two together if we wanted to, to come up with $1.52, or you could do the calculation. We've got our net income or profit here of 154710 Deduct your preferred share dividend and divide by our wax, and that would give you $1.52 per share. So this concludes our short segment on the actual question and the income statement complete with earnings per share and weighted average common share calculations.